Hi everybody, and welcome back to another Bloomhost tutorial video. Today we're taking a look at DuckPanel's Schedule Manager, which allows you to have tasks executed for your server every X amount of time, like daily or weekly, etc. I'm over here in the Schedules tab in the DuckPanel menu, and you'll notice here that we don't have any schedules configured yet. Normally there would be a list of schedules here if we had some, but we don't have any yet. So we're going to go ahead and create a schedule here. I'll go over this import function later. Alternatively, instead of creating a schedule, there's actually a templates button here that Bloom added to sort of give you a leg up so that you don't have to create every template from scratch. They gave us sample schedules such as a daily restart or an automatic backup system that happens every six hours. And if you wanted to just use these as a starting point, you could hit create on either of these. But Let's just take a look at the schedule menu by hitting create schedule. So this is the opener menu that you see when you want to create a new schedule. Let's give it a test schedule name. And then the next thing we have to do is decide how often we want the schedule to run. So there are a bunch of different options here. We have minutely every X amount of minutes, hourly every certain amount of hours at a certain amount of minutes past the hour if you want that. There's daily every X amount of days at a certain time. Weekly, you could pick any number of days of the week at a certain time you want the schedule to run. There's monthly, which day of the month at a certain time. And if you really wanna fine tune how often your schedule runs, you can go to the advanced tab here, which uses cron job syntax for minutes, hours, days of the month, month, and day of the week. Let's go back to daily. And I wanna point something out here. Bloom's scheduling system runs in UTC. Every time zone is based off of or offset from UTC. So you'll notice here that if we're running at zero UTC, my local time is 8 p.m. I'm in Eastern time. So right now there is a four hour offset between Eastern time here and UTC. I have to jump ahead four hours from Eastern time to UTC. So if I wanted to run something at like 2 a.m. Eastern time, I would have to add four hours and put a six here. So six o'clock UTC would be 2 a.m. Eastern time. Note that with daylight savings, uh, the differences between time zones will fluctuate sometimes. Down here, we have a few more options that we can fine tune for our schedule. This one here is called only when server is online. This will only run the tasks in the schedule when the server is running. So if this is off, even if your server is off, the scheduler will run anyway. Now, if you're doing something like a daily restart system, you probably wanna leave this on. If you're doing something like a backup system, you probably want to keep this off because even if your server's off, you probably wanna be backing it up in most cases. I'll just leave this on for now. Alternatively, we can select only when server is offline. So if this is on, now you'll notice that we can't have both of these options selected at the same time because they're mutually exclusive. So I'm gonna to toggle this one off for now. And then this is just an enabler or disabler for the schedule itself. And then we can come down here and hit create schedule. Okay, so here is the schedule edit menu. Over here we can see when the schedule last ran, when it will run next, and then in general, when it runs. Over here, we can actually export the schedule in JSON format. If you click on this, it'll copy it to your clipboard down here. And then actually, we can go to the schedule list and use the import button, as I teased before, to import the schedule if we want to use it for something different. Okay, let's go back into our test schedule. We can use this edit button here to open the same menu that we saw when we created the schedule. But for now, let's create a new task. Okay, so this is the create task menu. There are a list of actions that we can pick from when we're creating a schedule. The first one here is sending a command and the payload down here is just the command without the slash on it. So I could type say hello and then the console would send a hello message using the Minecraft say command. For all of these actions here up here, there is a time offset in seconds. 
So this won't matter if this is the first task running because when the schedule runs, the first task will go immediately. So after the previous task runs, how long do you want to wait until this task runs? So 10 seconds means that the first task would go and then 10 seconds later, the second task, this one, would go. I'll leave this at zero for now. Other actions include sending a power action. So this is including starting the server, restarting, stopping, and terminating or killing the server. You can also create a backup. More on backups in our backups tutorial video. And you can also delete a file by providing the path to the file name here. You can also select continue on failure, which means that if this task fails, do you want to run the subsequent tasks. So for something like a server restart schedule, if you're sending tasks to warn players a few minutes ahead of time that the server is restarting, then you probably want to have this off because if the messages fail, you probably don't wanna just like restart the server and kick your players out of their server out of the blue. The last thing you can do with a schedule is you can delete a schedule down here. And if I click yes, delete schedule, then the schedule is gone from our list. Okay, so for the second part of this video, let's create a test server restarter schedule together. So we'll go to create schedule. We'll call this a daily restart. We'll restart this daily and I wanna do it at uh, midnight uh, Eastern time. So we'll set this to four o'clock UTC because there is a four hour time difference between Eastern and UTC. I only want to run this when the server is online because if it's offline, there's no reason to restart it. And we'll keep this enabled. And I'll hit create schedule. Okay, let's make a new task. So first what I wanna do is I want to warn players five minutes ahead of time that the server is going to restart. So let's send a command. And we'll use the say command and we'll say, the server is restarting in five minutes and I won't hit continue on failure. If this fails, I don't wanna restart the server. And I just copied this because of the next task I'm about to do. I want to warn players then one minute ahead of time that the server is restarting. So I wanna hit new task and the payload will be the server is restarting in one minute. And then I need to do a four minute offset between the five minute warning and the one minute warning. So that is 240 seconds. I'll hit create task and you'll notice that down here in the task list 240 seconds later after the five minute warning it'll send the one minute warning and one thing I want to point out is you can edit tasks here or you can also delete individual tasks here now that we have a list the last thing we have to do is restart the server so new task and then we're going to send a power action to restart the server 60 seconds after the one minute warning, and we'll hit create task. Okay, so now we have a complete scheduler restarting the server every day at 12 a.m. local time. First, we're going to announce that the server is restarting in five minutes. Four minutes later, we're going to announce that the server is restarting in one minute. And then 60 seconds later, we're going to send a power action to restart the server. Hopefully this all gives you a better idea of the flexibility and power that DuckPanel's schedule manager has. That'll do it for this Bloomhost tutorial video. If you have any questions about what we covered today, leave them in the comments below or join our Bloom Discord server, link in the description, and you can ask them there and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. You can also view the playlist in the description for the other Bloomhost tutorial videos. And that is it. Thank you for choosing Bloomhost and we'll see you in the next video.